Happy Wisdom Wednesday, everyone, and this week's book of the week is Never Split the Difference, Negotiating as If Your Life Depended on It by Chris Voss with Tal Raz. Now, uh, I went through this book uh, maybe a couple years ago, really loved it a lot. It's something that I often refer back to. The audio version is also fantastic. But the thing that I love about this book is that, again, keep in mind, this is an FBI hostage negotiator, the top ones telling you how to negotiate. And the big key to negotiation, whether it's with terrorists or perhaps a business uh, 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 colleague, is empathy. Who would have thought? And before I go and show you a tactical application when it comes to negotiation, I want to kind of talk about the spirit of this book, and more specifically something that I heard today from Andy Puttacombe, who's the co-founder of Headspace, the meditation app. I've been using it uh, for many, many years now. And it's this. Now, when you approach a conflict or a negotiation, whether it's with ourselves or with another person, it, it really takes courage to approach it just completely free of expectation. And what that means is to be not only vulnerable, but, but curious, kind and understanding, willing to listen. Again, whether it's your, with yourself or with another person. Now, again, whether you're negotiating with somebody across the table for a business negotiation or a hostage situation or even just yourself about doing something, we're often coming to these situations with a particular outcome in mind from the very beginning. And when we do that, we, we will do everything in, in our power to make that outcome or goal a reality. And, and a lot of confirmation bias comes into play with this. And we go through any single way, whether it's with wording or, or data or anything, just to prove our point. And so we lose focus of, of the higher, higher, uh, higher ground that we can take and focus purely on the singular outcome that we've gotten obsessed about. So when negotiating, we tend up to put up all our own defenses, right? We get very defenses, and then we lose complete spaciousness of the mind. We become very, very narrow-minded. And rather than even listening, again, whether you're negotiating with yourself about doing something or another person about an outcome, we lose that spaciousness, and so we become so narrow-minded that we don't even listen, and we focus more on what's in our head next versus what the other person is trying to communicate to us. And we lose that curiosity and vulnerability and essentially that effectiveness. And of course, in that process, we get frustrated, we get angry. And so along the way, we, we lose our patience, we lose our, our kindness, our gentleness. And that's when things really start to go awry. And you can forget about negotiating with a, a terrorist or a hostage in a negotiation. Think about even when you're speaking to a coworker or maybe even a spouse. And so, of course, when all of this happens, we lose complete interest and curiosity about the process, about the other possibilities, because we become so obsessed about that one outcome that we want. We become angry, we become frustrated, we become mean, and more importantly, we become ineffective, you know? And when training in meditation, the one thing I've learned is learning how to put your mind very much like a rock in the bottom of a river where the emotions are the water flowing around it, but you don't get swept up in it. And in doing that, you learn to kind of lower your defenses, you learn to be a little bit more vulnerable, you learn to listen more. And even ask the question, more often than not, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I, I looked at this the wrong way. And the funny thing is that when we actually start to do that, not only will the other person be very appreciative of that, and of course, you'll now, instead of looking at the other person that you're negotiating with as the opposition, but in reality, the, your partner, Right? It's really that the two of you are partnering up and the opponent, the problem, is the situation on the table that you're trying to solve. So both of you are happy. Right? Um, you also, in the process, start to understand very clearly how the mind works. Your mind, other people's minds. There's a saying, and I think it came from the Godfather, that uh, Don Corleone told his son that when, when, you, uh, when you understand how the mind works, you start to understand how... Uh, everyone's mind wor works and at that point anything is possible and I really do believe that in this process when you learn how to be more vulnerable with conflicts right willing to listen to be curious and, and focus more on the process and not so much this outcome you end up developing a much stronger skill set uh, in life in business that will always always help you in the long run and more importantly illuminate better possibilities that you weren't aware of 
So one of the tactics, and again, I told you I'd share one, is this tactical approach to empathy, which is labeling. You see, when you're negotiating with somebody, again, whether it's a spouse, a terrorist, or uh, uh, somebody in business, people, you're dealing with human beings. And there are two types of behaviors. There's that presenting behavior that you see on the surface, and then the underlying emotion that's driving that behavior. And so it's very effective as a tactic to immediately label that emotion that they might be possibly feeling. And more often than not, it's not too hard to, to see. A lot of times it has to do with anger, frustration when you say that. And you can say that it seems to be that you, you're very frustrated, or it looks like you're very frustrated, or I feel that you're very frustrated, right? Whatever that emotion is, you immediately uh, create this bridge between you and that other person where you've now demonstrated that you actually understand, you, you, can, you value and understand their feelings. And keep in mind, this isn't uh, fluffy stuff because this guy is an FBI hostage negotiator. They did this with terrorists, for God's sake. Right? So surely you can do this in your business and of course even with your spouse, your kids, your friends and family. Right? Label those emotions and see how valuable it is. And more importantly, again, I always say practice these things on yourself because the moment you start to understand the biases in your mind and how your mind works, you become so much more effective at elevating and making things better around you. So whenever I get upset, I'm having a bad day, things aren't going well, I'll say it out loud to myself and I say, you know, I'm really angry today and I can feel that I'm very angry. Literally, I'll talk out loud to myself. And when you talk this through, funny enough, you'll start to identify what it is that made, you know, that you might be angry about, what's going to make it better. And often the thing that's going to make it better isn't the thing that you originally had in your mind. Because when you think about it more, that original outcome you might be obsessed with in your mind, in reality isn't going to make you happy in the wrong run. And it's probably not even good for you. So. That's the book of the week. I hope you like it. Definitely go out and get it. There's a lot of great skills and tactics that he provides. But more importantly, Voss provides a wonderful framework and more importantly, a philosophy of how you should think about negotiating, whether it's with yourself or more importantly, with the world around you. So as always, happy Wisdom Wednesday. Go out and get the book. And as always, I'll see you next week.